Jumelangelekai, my name is Tanaka and today I am going to show you how I made this traditional Botswana attire so hopefully you enjoy So I'm attempting to make this using this really nice fabric that I got um, so this is the fabric and it looks really nice. So this it's actually a replica of um, Animal fur because it's really like it's suede like feels like suede. I don't know what you call it um, Faux suede maybe um, and it's the right shade the right color and I only got one and a half meters because that's all they had and I'm hoping it's enough To start off I'm using an old plastic bag and I'm just gonna cut up my pattern for the skirt Next, I'm going to cut out my pattern that I've cut on the plastic bag onto my material. So I start with the back part of the skirt, which is the longer part. And then once I have the back part, I'll trim my plastic so that it's smaller for the front section of my skirt. Next, I'm using my singlet to cut out the top of my costume. And because this singlet is cotton, it stretches and this fabric does not stretch. I'll have to use my actual measurements, which I've measured myself before I started. And it's on the little piece of paper. And so I'm going to use this measuring tape to mark out where my actual measurements should lie. And then I'll just cut it out and I'll start sewing. Sewing, I decided to start with my skirt. I have this cream or off-white bias trim or binding trim and I watched a few videos on YouTube to see how I could attach this properly because I've never really done this. As I mentioned to you and as I always mention, I don't know how to sew professionally and so all I did was just go around the edge of my front of the skirt and then once I went around the whole skirt, I cut it out and then I folded it and then I did a, a second stitch on top of the bias binding and it came out pretty good.
for the piece that goes on the back of my skirt I decided to just use my overlocking machine and just overlock around the fabric to just neaten it and the only thread I had was this navy blue dark blue looking thread as I mentioned before we are in lockdown in Sydney and so I cannot go to the shops to buy normal colors that I need um, thread yarn or anything else that I need So I, I'll just go with what I have. I'll do this navy blue and if it doesn't look nice, I'll just cut it off and just leave it plain without any overlocking. So now I'm just checking to see if everything is sitting well and I'm using some pins to just secure the two pieces of fabric together. So on this side, I'm putting pins. That's where I'm going to stitch the two skirts together. And then the plan is on the other side, I'm going to put Velcro. And just to finish off the skirt, I'm going to just overlook the top part so that it's all in a straight line. And just like that, I'm finished with the skirt. So this was the easiest skirt I've ever had to make. Pretty nice, pretty simple, and I'm pretty happy with that. For my top, I am going to start by overlocking the top part of my top, so the neck area and then under the sleeves. And then once I'm done, I am going to attach the two pieces of fabric together and I will attempt to put a zipper under one of the arms. So this is me putting on the zipper and I have this cream zip and it's a really short zip and it will fit the side of my sleeve like under my arm 
perfectly well and so what I do is I just use the same technique that I use for the binding I just sew the zip on and then I fold it and then I do a stitch on top it actually came out nicer than I thought So that's my top done and I'm pretty happy with the result. See how beautiful it is. I'm looking at this and I think I need to put dots or something on the bottom so that I don't flush people when I wear this. Obviously, I don't want to go viral for all the wrong reasons. So I'm thinking dots or elastic band on the bottom part. Now, you know you're not watching my video if I'm not doing some sort of beading uh, on my DIY. So I'm actually going to do two round beads and this will look like the waist beads that people are wearing nowadays but these are the two round beads that go on the side of the costume so once i'm finished you'll see exactly what i mean but this is the same exact same technique that you use to make waist beads if you're really interested in seeing how to make waist beads i'm also happy to show you how to do it in another video so just watch how i make this it's just straightforward loading beads onto this thread and I'll do I'll make two of them so there we go all done and let me show you how this goes on the outfit. So it goes, one goes on the other side and then the other one goes crisscross on the other side like that. So that's all. And it was just a simple, straightforward beading. Hello guys. So today I'm going to show you how I use this beading loom. I know you've seen me using it in my other videos, but today I'm going to show you step by step how I use it. So I'm going to make a headband for my costume and I wasn't going to make a headband because I ran out of the right beads. So these are the beads that I'll be using for my costume today, but I did not have white beads. So this is all, and it's not really that much. This is all the white beads I have. And I tried to buy them online and they kept sending me the wrong beads. I had decided I'm not going to do a headband, but to do this costume justice, I am going to just attempt to use the few beads that I have, like if you can see, my blue and white beads are perfect size and then the black beads are slightly smaller but it will work out. So I'll use this beading loom and then my beads, my yarn or thread, this is wax. So I, before I bought this I used to use a normal candle and then I, bought, I got this and then my, my threader. So um, before I thread, this is what I do, I'll just put this aside. So I take a little piece of paper and then I mark out my pattern or my design or the colors, like um, see what colors I'm going to use and then what pattern I'm going for. So because this is just a flag, this is what I'm going for. So I'm just marking it out. And so the middle, which is this part, is going to be black. And then the two sides are going to be white. So this will determine how much thread to put or yarn to put. So can you see sorry okay so this is black this is white and then i'm gonna put blue and then blue and then blue blue so it looks like this and i have something here that will give you a visual of what i'm trying to achieve so this is the flag that i'm going to do so the black is in the middle and then the two whites in the sides i don't know if those white beads are going to be enough and then two lines of blue on the side and then once i've determined my pattern so it'll just be a straight pattern like this normally i do a zigzag or sometimes i do like different designs but this is how i do it i mark it out on paper and then once it's marked out on paper i can count to see how much thread i need so this is one two three four five six seven eight so it shows that i need to thread eight um yarn yarn or thread on my beading loom and so the next thing I, I do is measure my head and I'm just going to go with a rough estimate because I don't have my tape measure with me here today so what I can do actually is use the yarn to go around my head so I'll turn this for a minute oh my head is a mess guys 
so don't judge me my hair is a mess my face is a mess like i just woke up so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this yarn or thread and i'm going to measure my head and so this is how much i need but i am going to put in extra i'm going to leave like oh you can't even see this much extra on both sides like that so that much extra on both sides so that i have enough yarn and when i thread my yarn so this is how much i need this is where i should cut i can actually cut there but i'm not going to cut there because i'm going to double my yarn like that and so when i double it and when i thread it this becomes two so instead of threading eight yarn instead of threading eight yarn i'm going to thread four yarn so it'll be doubled like that oh, let me turn it so instead of threading eight yarn because i'm doubling it it will be four yarn so it'll be like this one and this one will go around like that and then this one and this one and then this one and this one and then that one and that one so that is how you thread it so you thread for whatever you measure for your head you double it because it's going to be wound around here that's the knot so this double thread will come this middle one will come around this one so all i need is four four thread that will make eight lines hope you understand but if you just watch you see what i mean so i'm going to cut there that's one Two, that's three, and then I need one more. And then that's four. So these are my four yarn. As you can see one two three four so what I do is I look for this I look for the center it's quite hard because I'm zoomed in so I keep forgetting so that's the center this one and so this center part comes here and before I put it in I really I like this is my personal thing I prefer to put a small knot on it that way I know it won't come out so I just make a small knot like that and then I just put it in and I make sure all my four threads have gone in. So just like that. And then I take my beading loom and which side am I going to put? So I take it and then I open it. So this part controls like how long this thing is. And then I open it on the side I push this little thing back in here and then I push the other one it's a washer the other washer on the other side and so I place it in the grooves on both sides and I make sure the washers are see how this washer is there and then that washer is there and then I close it like that yeah and I'm not doing it tightly because I'm going to have to roll this yarn so now all i need to do is spread it out and that's when you'll see that the four yarn makes eight so when i spread it out i make sure that one yarn is in each groove see these little grooves that look like a comb so i just make sure that one yarn is in each groove i don't have two in the same like now i have two in the same one and then i have two in the same one here perfect and then all I do is roll the yarn so when I'm rolling this is filling up anyway we're back to our original and then once that's done I'm running out of thread on this side. I'm going to 
secure on the side. And then I like to take a little elastic uh, sticky tape and I just put it there for now so that it holds this side while I thread the other side. So if I pull it, this one, oops, is gonna come in on the other side. It's not that hard guys, it's just that I've got this tripod thing in front of my face and then I just put it the same way I did and then I secure it and this side is quite easy you don't have to do much but all you need to make sure is before you secure it on the other side make sure your yarn is straight so I'm just gonna straighten it with my hands and to tell you the truth this took me a while to figure out how to do it i watched a few videos obviously on youtube after i bought it and i bought it i think in 2007 or 2008 no 2010 i bought this in 2010 somewhere there just because i enjoy doing craft okay so all you need to do is make sure it's straight and it's going along like that like that and at this point I don't worry about the ones that I have skipped a groove for now because I just want to make sure that they're all going in their own groove and then once that's done I uh, see how I've been holding this all along that's for the tension I want to just oops I'm gonna just start wrapping it and this is like the tension is good it's not too loose it's not too tight And so there's many ways of doing this but this is how i do it and then on this side i put this yarn and this yarn this tape i put this tape and this tape stays there the whole time i am threading on this side because i didn't tie a knot like the other side so i'm just gonna knitting it so it doesn't get caught on the side when i when i knitting and then the tape on this side i'm gonna remove it in a minute but before i do i just want to make sure my yarn is in each groove so you can use your needle for this it's actually better to use your needle because it won't pull the tension too much and now i am going to remove this tape on this side because i don't need it and so we are ready to start beading so to start beading i'm going to thread my yarn and I'm just thinking, I'm just gonna use this thick white yarn. And just try and not make it too long, otherwise it'll get tangled and it's not even worth it making it too long, it gets tangled. how easy it is with the threader and so all I do with this is I just put my needle in like that and then I put my thumb on my thread and I pull it through so what it's doing is it's putting wax on my thread so it doesn't tangle like that when I'm threading so I just pull it through see like that so it doesn't tangle like that and I've tried it it works guys like that and that's it and so I will be threading and so I will be threading from this side, going this way, because this is where my extra thread is. So I'll be rolling my thread that way. And to start my threading, I normally just tie a knot. So I put it in like that. And I just tie a knot like that. And I'm just gonna leave this 
loose thing. And then I'm going to take my beads and I'm going to go with my pattern. So two blue, one white, one black, one white, two blue. So that's how I'm going to go. This is quite simple. Two blue, one white, one black, one white. Oops. And then two blue. And I'll just say, so this is the pattern that is going to come out as. I'll just say like, if you put the wrong number of thread, when you do your first one, that's when you will see. So this one, I've sh already showed you before, this goes under, and then I make sure my beads go through this thread, which I ended up making big for some reason. When you make it too long, it tangles. So it goes under, so you can see how it's under. And then I'm gonna do it like this so you can see. You put the beads through like that. So each bead goes in through each of the groove. So the first one is the one that shows you if you've put too much. So see how it's perfect? And then now my needle goes through the middle. So we're going to continue, two blue, and then I just take four, so that I don't open it again. I'm going to hold these two, one white, one black, one white again, and then the two blues. And it's the same, under, I pull it, and then it's going to come in, push these beads up, so you push these beads up with your index finger, and then this can go through the hole, and if you can see it's going on top of the yarn, like that. So just so I can be quick, I went to get these cupcake containers and I find that when I use these cupcake containers, I can just put my beads in here and it makes the project faster. So I'm going to pull my beads in. Oh, can you see? Pulling my beads in here. Okay, I don't need that much work. And I'm going to do it faster.
So it took, took me roughly 40 minutes. And then all I do is remove my beaded band off my beading loom. And I'll just put this aside because I don't need it at the moment. So this is what I have. And as you can see, I try to add some blue at the end because this was too short. This is where my white beads finished. So this is the only white beads I had. And this pattern would be perfect if the beads were exactly the same size. So that's why you see the shape is kind of like not straight because the beads are not exactly the same size. If you look here where the blue beads are, they're mostly the same size. But because some of the white beads were bigger than the black beads and the black beads were small, this is the shape that it comes out. But it's not bad. It looks nice. And normally when I do this, I use translucent thread so that I don't see it at the end. It will be invisible. I do have some invisible thread and it's not even that expensive. But even like this, this is not bad. Okay, so to finish off, I'll just unravel my thread at the end. Remove it from the knot. I'm just going to tie, cut this knot and throw it away. I don't really need it. So this is why you need to put ex excess thread at the end. And I'll do the same on this side. I will unravel it. And I'm going to put these two aside. I don't need them. So normally when I do this beading for specific things, I have to tuck in all these excess thread that is hanging at the end. I have to tuck them in. And I do that by just going in, like back in. And then I normally do two, one from this end and one from this end. And then I just tuck them in. And then I tie them and I cut them somewhere in between. And I do the same for the rest. But because I need these, str uh, because I need these threads, to hold my band together, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just thread this in and I'll bring all the thread to the two center parts. I'm going to use my tape to just hold that in place. Maybe I'll hold it a bit further up like that. And then all I'm going to do is braid this down. I found this to be the easiest way um, to finish off, especially if you need this thread. Especially if you need this thread that's hanging. So I'm going to braid this. I'm going to take one from there and then like that. And that looks long enough. So all I'm going to do is tie a knot. Like that. And then I'm going to cut off this excess thread. Like that. And then I will do, so this is what it looks like. And then I'll do the same. Oh what my band looks like when it's finished both sides are done and the ends are like that so I can tie them together after that. so the final thing I'm going to make it's an ankle shaker and you normally need to have two of them and I won't go into detail but because of lockdown I can't make two I don't have enough shells so I'm just going to make one it's better to have one than none so all i'm doing is cutting this fabric which is cream um, and i measured my ankle so i'm using the length of my ankle so around the perimeter of my ankle to just cut this fabric and then all i'll do is sew around the fabric and then put it inside out and then i'll stitch on my shells and it'll, it just makes sense when you're watching it than when I'm trying to explain. So just watch what I'm doing. Hope you enjoy. So I just left that small corner part unstitched so that I can turn this fabric inside out. So I'm cutting off excess 
thread and then I'm going to turn it inside out. And then I'm just measuring to see if this will fit on my ankle and I'm also trying it on and it's perfect. The next thing I'm going to do is put little velcro dots on the side. So I'm going to sew around this whole thing and also close that part which was open. And while I do that, I'm going to put these little velcro dots. That's what's going to hold my ankle shaker together. The next thing I'm going to use my shells so all I have is these two little packets of shells they look the same but one is actually smaller than the other finally I'm just sewing the shells onto my fabric and all I'm doing is just sewing one at a time and I'm putting a gap of about half a centimeter in between each shell and I'll just keep sewing till I get to the other side and then I'll do the row under and then I'll do a third row so I'm doing three rows and the design that I went with I'll just put it here so this is how I put the first row and then the second row came in like that and then the last row and you can see from my design that there was a bit of overlap with the shells So I was trying to hold off on putting those other beads that I just placed on the table because they're quite larger than the ones I used before. If you can see the size, this one is quite big. That's why that bag of shells had less because they're bigger. So it's good because they're going on the bottom line. So no one will really see the difference, but this is how I ended up doing it. So this is my final look. This is my traditional Botswana attire. I ended up putting elastic under my top because obviously, as I mentioned, I didn't want to flush anyone with any things popping out. Here's my attempt to Botswana dancing. <laughs> I'm going to stop embarrassing myself. Fun facts about Botswana. Botswana is officially known as the Republic of Botswana and it is located in Southern Africa. The capital city of Botswana is Gaborone. 
The national language of Botswana is Setswana. 70% of Botswana is actually a desert and it's called the Kalahari Desert. Botswana is home to one of the seven national wonders of Africa. I actually didn't know this. It's called the Okavango Delta. And another thing that I didn't know is that Botswana has the largest population of elephants. I always thought Zimbabwe had the largest population of elephants, but apparently Botswana has more elephants in the whole of Africa. And at certain times you will see the great migration, which you never hear. I know we all know about the great migration in Kenya up the top, but there's a great migration that happens in Botswana and it is the great migration of elephants from Chobe National Park to the Okavango Delta. So that's quite interesting. I didn't know that as well. And finally, I'm going to tell you about famous films and movies in Botswana. My first and foremost favorite, favorite, favorite famous movie is The Gods Must Be Crazy, guys. That's if you haven't watched it. If you haven't watched it, you need to watch it. You need to look for it. You need to watch it. Um, but if you do look for it, go to a library. Don't go on YouTube because the clips on YouTube don't do it justice. So try and look for The Gods Must Be Crazy part one and part two. And the second and most important film was the number one lady detective. The number one lady detective featuring Jill Scott. You need to watch it. It was amazing. It's actually quite good. And I actually enjoyed watching some of the series on TV. <laughs> you mean, um, you mean, uh, I'm looking for Ma Ramatsui, the detective. I am Ma Ramatsui. Ma Makutsi graduated from the Botswana Secretary of College. 97%! Hey, hey, that's a high, Ma. It is the highest in the history of the college. Rebanda, would you care, care to come into my office? Oh, pleasure, pleasure. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you do, just put some comments. If you're from Botswana, let me know how you rate my costume. Obviously, I didn't do the shwe shwe. I wanted to do something traditional, and this is what I went for. It actually came out well. I put a zip. I'm not really good at sewing, but I put a zipper, and it actually looks nice. Like, I could actually walk out like this. And guess, guess, guess. You won't guess. You will never guess this right. Guess which country is coming next. If you do guess right, I don't know what I'm going to do, but you will never guess this right. Guess which country is coming next. See?